Hey guys, today I'm gonna to be talking about 3D printed guitar picks. Now this might seem like an odd choice for a video for YouTube, but I think it's a very practical video because there's a lot of things that this accomplishes. One, it is a good way to introduce yourself to 3D printing. Printing guitar picks on a 3D printer is actually really easy to do. It's not a complex print. There's really not a lot you have to do and the results are very practical and you can play your guitar with them. Now I know that some people will be saying, well, celluloid picks are much better than what you could get with ABS or PLL plastic. And I know that's true, but my problem isn't so much breaking picks as much as it is losing them. For every one pick I broke, I have probably lost 50. So what I did on my 3D printer is I basically just set up a test batch of these and I printed off several different sizes ranging from 0.4 millimeters in thickness up to about two millimeters of thickness. Now what I found with this is that the really practical ones were the, the thinner ones. So everything from 0.4 up to about 1.4 millimeters of thickness. Anything beyond that was just really too stiff to use. So I created a STL file and I'll link that in the video description down below for the ones that I think are most practical. So what I want to do with this is just talk about the picks and look at the thickness and then just demo the picks on the guitar. So here's Tinkercad. This is where I worked on designing these. You can see that they're just all laid out here. Let me get a lower angle here so you can see the thickness. Uh, you can see the variables uh, thickness on these in the CAD program. It's a little harder to see from a photograph, but if you look at these, you can see that they're laid out thinnest to thickest. And this one was 0.4 millimeters, and then they have a 0.2 millimeter stepping between each iteration. So this would be a one millimeter here. This is the last one that I found practical, and anything beyond this was just too stiff for me. So I, of course, exported this and brought it into Cura. So I'm gonna show you that now for the settings that I used. So here is the STL file, open it up in Cura. You can see that the results are pretty much the same. Uh, the print settings for this I used were pretty much the stock ones for PLA printing. So I could print these in ABS. I have a spool of that, but ABS is a little bit more uh, brittle in terms of breakage. So I went with PLA plastic on this one. So that would work for guitar picks. So I went with a standard setting for this. The only thing that I really modified on this was the infill density. I put that at 100% rather than having no uh, hollowness in the picks, especially for the thicker ones. I just wanted a solid piece of plastic, which typically is what you're going to have with a guitar pick. And I think other than that, I think I slowed the print down to about 40 millimeters per second. Other than that, everything worked just fine. Uh, you can put a build adhesion type around this just to make sure everything sticks well uh, for a skirt. And then once it's done, uh, you don't have to do this, though. But once everything's done, you can just slice it. And uh, you can get about an hour and 27 minutes for these. Um, I think mine went a little bit faster than that. That's just an estimate. And of course the preview, you can see that it's printing the skirt and you can see each of the picks that are printed. And then you save that, pop it in your printer and print away. So here's the results after printing. I arranged these from thickest to thinnest. Now it's hard to tell on the photograph here. Uh, you can definitely tell the difference between say this one and this one down here, but some of these in the middle actually look like that of order, but I have to, it just, I guess the light, I don't know. This one actually looks thicker than this one, but I guess it's the way the light's casting on it. But I did arrange them from thickest to thinnest, so hopefully you can see a little bit of difference there. And then on this top down view right here, this is just looking at the tops of them. You can see some of the imperfections in the print. Of course, you have things like this right here. And then on some of these thinner picks, you have issues like this where um, some of the adhesion didn't work as well as I hoped it would. But in any case, that's something that I have to work on. I have to improve my technique for uh, setting up a print job and getting it to work well. But I'm all, I'm still learning how to do this. So printing picks is easy to do. It's quick. And so it's a great thing that you can do for uh, learning how to do this. And it's also very practical because at the end of the day, if after I clean up some of this, I can still use the pick even if it's an ugly print. So it's still very practical, even if I'm not getting the perfect print every time. So to test these, I'm just going to play a couple of chords with each one. I'm going to play the same chords with each pick going down from the thickest to the thinnest. I'll let you know which one I'm using when I play the chord progression. Now, you should be able to hear a difference in the sound whenever I use a different pick. So I'm going to start off with the 1.4 millimeter. <laughs> One point two millimeter. One millimeter. Point eight millimeter. 
millimeter. Point six millimeter. And lastly, point four millimeter. So like I said, this really comes down to preference. Like if you like a thicker pick that doesn't have a lot of flex to it, then these 1.4s are gonna be really good on PLA. I think this is a great pick for like a bass guitar. Uh, it's really not something I would probably play with on an acoustic, but you can see I have a bass behind me and I do use a pick on that occasionally. And this would be a great bass pick. Uh, but anything thicker than this just doesn't have any flex to it. So it's probably not gonna be useful for playing. Maybe you like that, but I, I think 1.4 is about as thick as I'd go on PLA plastic. And everything down beyond this is got a little bit of flex, like this 1.2 has got a little bit of flex to it, but nothing quite like the 0.4, which is almost like a nylon pick. You can almost fold it in half like a nylon pick, like you would have at a similar uh, thickness. And this one gets a similar effect like you would get with a nylon pick too. But this, again, is something that you can print with the same kind of plastic as a thicker pick. Now, the sweet spot for me, I think, is a one millimeter pick about like this, is you got just enough give, but it's not overly stiff either. And it's really conducive to my style of play. So I'm going to probably be printing off a lot of these in the future, but I'm probably going to keep these other ones and have a few of them laying around just because it's always nice to have uh, a lot of tools in your toolbox when you're playing guitar. So if you like this content, please subscribe to the channel, like this video, share it with your friends, drop a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, you can download the STL file in the comment section down below too. I'll upload that to Thingiverse and you can download and play with these picks and create your own picks. Maybe use some different plastics, use some different colors, different designs, whatever it might be. Have fun with it. It's just a great way to learn how to do 3D printing and play guitar at the same time. If you like this content, please consider subscribing to the channel by clicking on the subscribe button. You can also like this content by clicking on the thumbs up or share this content with your friends and also comment in the comment section down below. You can also find me online at www.blaze.net or on Twitter at The One Mule. And as always, thanks for watching.